The following is a presentation of the Eagles Sports Network. Hello and welcome into week seven of the Mike Clowney Show as Carson Newman picks up a 14-10 win on the road on Erskine's homecoming. I'm the voice of the Eagles, Adam Cavalier, alongside Carson Newman head football coach Mike Clowney. Mike, a homecoming of sorts for yourself, uh, playing in the stadium where you started your full-time coaching career at Greenwood High School, playing 50 miles from your hometown, uh, but trepidatious down the stretch. Uh, but managed to pull it out of the fire. Just the third time that Carson Newman has won a game in the last 18 years when scoring fewer than 19 points. Uh, what did it take to get the do job done on, a road, on the road against an Erskine team uh, that was fired up for its homecoming? Yep, um, really, it just took phenomenal defense. You know, I thought our guys defensively you know, did a great job. You know, several times in there, there was bend, don't break. You know, they got their back against the wall with, with some turnovers and other situations. And well, it was able to keep Erskins out of the end zone. You know, the score was tight. I think we both kind of knew, like, you know, one score would determine that game the way the game was going. So, you know, they were going for it on fourth down. You know, our guys were, you know, consistently able to get four stops to get them out the field to give us another opportunity. Uh, low possession game. We've talked on and off about the changes in the clock rules this year that was on display. The first half only took 57 minutes. You only touched the ball three times uh, in the first half. Only touched it nine times for the game. Uh, in a game like that, like this, how magnified are your scoring chances? You know, you when you get those opportunities, you have to take advantage of it. I just remember looking up and the first quarter was over with. <laughs> Um, like literally over with and it just because you know they put a drive together to where you know we had a mistake on, on in the kicking game you know allowed them to extend a drive you know they continued that drive and then by the time we got the ball and got the drive the, the quarter was over with so you know every time you get an opportunity it creates a situation of like you can't panic but you know like getting points on the board is a premium. The, uh, the, the mistakes in this one uh, you were able to overcome uh, there haven't been too many games uh, in the last 20 years where it's, it's been like this. You played it, This was as ugly as it gets at yeah. times, and you pulled out a win. Uh, is it gratifying? Is it frustrating? Is it a mix? What, what's the emotion like of uh, this one was uh, lipstick on a pig, yeah. uh, and yet uh, there's a W, there's a win in the, the win column. Yeah, that's what we talked to guys about, you know, is you, you hate to complain about a win. Yeah. Um, but, you know, at the same time, you have to look at and address the things that where, you, where you have problems. And it was frustrating, you know, us turning the ball over, you know, making the mistakes in the kicking game, the penalties. You know, it was just so sloppy because there was a point you felt like we kind of worked past that. And you all just kind of continue to grow past that and not revert back to that. So that part of it was frustrating. But I was proud of the guy, you know, doing what it took to win the game. Carson Newman gets the job done 14-10 to 10 over the Erskine Flying Fleet. We break down at the first half after these messages on the Mike Clowney Show. Sure, we've been around a while, 171 years to be exact. We know the power of a liberal arts-based Christian education and the tremendous potential of what can be found on this campus within this community. We are adventurers, dreamers, believers, passionate and compassionate, curious and clever, driven by a common purpose towards a common goal. I found my passion. I found purpose. We are Carson Newman. What will you find? All right back in the Mike Clowney Show, Carson Newman, winners on the road from JW Webb Stadium over the Erskine Flying Fleet. The final score 14 to 10. Adam Cavalier alongside the Eagles head man, Mike Clowney, Mike, a uh, first half kind of touched on it. Uh, it was gone uh, like that. Both teams moved the ball on significant drives, but something that we will touch on uh, as the show goes along, uh, a penalty, what extends Erskine's possession uh, and allows them to put points on the board first. Something that we haven't seen called this season 
jumping into the, the wedge, I suppose, is what extends the, the drive. It uh, felt like that was a theme uh, throughout this game. Unfortunately, some things that hadn't happened uh, all season. Excess, excessive penalties, uh, putting the ball on the ground, what were detrimental to your team on Saturday? Yep, I mean, because like the thing that we did was extend drives for them. A lot of those penalties were on, you know, critical situations, third and long. I mean, the fourth down, like we forced the punt, we've got the ball, and then you, you, you get that penalty call, and we have face mask, you know, on, on third and long. And you, we just got to do a good job. A lot of that, it's just, it's just finishing plays too. You know, defensively on tackles, running your feet. A lot of times we're getting in a situation to where we kind of reach it with our hands. And then you get hands and you're just looking to grab something. So we got to do a good job of continue to bring our feet to tackles. We got to do a, do a better job of, you know, getting more guys to the football at points of time defensively. And then offensively, you know, we've got to make sure that, you know, you know the snap count, you got to be patient, hang in there. And then, you know, I thought, once or twice where we've been pushing guys to try to make sure we get off the ball quicker and there's the time in there we got off too quick, <laughs> you know. Yeah, but like that, you know, we can tailor that's the um but then like I say, do you go back to the turnovers, you know, like that all of that mixed in together just just it makes it you put you put a lot of pressure on yourself when you do that. Uh again, probably can't overstate the value of the defensive performance in this one. Erskine had three trips inside uh, the red zone they scored on one of those uh, and those three trips the drive started every one of them inside the 20. Um, it, the fumbles uh, with the exception of one on special teams they came as your team was moving the ball uh, in the fourth quarter felt like uh, Carson Newman was on the cusp of making it a two or three score game to, to really put things uh, to bed, how much does that increase the frustration level? It does because that was the thing that we talked about before the game. Well, you know, we talked about knocking on the door versus kicking it in. And so the thing that we're doing is like we, we continue to knock on the door and we had opportunities to kick it in, we didn't. And that's where that's that next step for us as a football team, you know, is to kick the door in. And that's where we got to continue to work to do that. And we got to score points to be able to do it. It was a 7-7 ball game at the halftime break, and here are a ton of defensive first-half highlights. And the Eagles succeed. Pender, three-step drop, steps up in the pocket. Pender wants to run. He's caught, smacked by Ed Verdry, and stopped shy of the six. In the boundary left side by Makai Brown and Ed Verdry down at the 14-yard line. Sullins up to the 23. Myers takes, fakes the handoff, rolls left, has time, airs it to the left sideline, makes Hauls it in for first down yardage, up at the 32-yard line, turns up field, and gets knocked down out of bounds up at the 38-yard line by Coulter. Because when you're in that double barrel in the shotgun, play fake to Lucky, Pinder back to pass. Shaheen Wilson has him in his grasp. He holds him up. Makai Brown finishes him off. It's a sack back to the 21-yard line. Loss of six on the play. Pinder claps his hands, takes the snap at the waist, throws a screen, quickly left side for Brown. Brown is hit in the backfield and snowed under by Champ Baker and Jet Jones into the backfield and Johnson. will hand off to him right side for a stretch play. David Alexander will not let him stretch it out and he latches onto his waist. Jameer Augustine helps finish him off over the right hashes. Double barrel shotgun for Pinder. On second and nine from the Eagle 15. Pinder, I'm going to throw the fade right side of the end zone. That is a spectacular one-handed snag over the D in Greenwood by Jamar Moore. Pinder claps his hand, takes the snap of the chest. Four-man rush, pressured up the middle. He's hit from behind. Major Williams has the solo sack back at the 21. Major Williams showing his skills as an edge rusher. Myers out of the gun. Runs the option at left side. Myers has a lane. He hops across the 20. He's inside the 15. And he gets dragged down from behind outside the left side. Numbers out of the gun. Curtis to his right. Option, speed option to the right. Late pitch, Curtis. Curtis upended. Goes topsy turvy. He lands at the one. It should be a first down. Out of the gun. Takes the snap to give us the Curtis. Cut left. Ball left. He's in. Touchdown. Carson Newman for the sixth time this season. Tyler Curtis pounds it in from a yard out. 
And the Eagles, a PAT from tying this one up with 54 seconds left in the second quarter. Those are the first half highlights. Eagles in fleet deadlocked at seven at the halftime break. Mike Clowney, what was your message in the, the halftime locker room? I think the thing for us was like, I call it family meeting. You know, <laughs> it's, you know, it's like one of those things. Sometimes at halftime, you scream and yell. You know, at this time, I thought it was important for us to have a conversation. And so, you know, I just sit down beside him with him. And, you know, it's not about Erskine. It's not about officiating. But we're just going to talk about us and, and where we are and what do we need to do, not just to put this game away, but just moving forward. And, you know, just listening and having that conversation, which is a family conversation. But I thought, you know, we, I, thought there, I thought there were some good, valid points that we probably need to go back and touch on and, and put action to. Uh, you, you said in the run-up that you wanted to establish the run. Uh, I, I think if you were to look at the final stats, you might put a little bit of a question mark on that, but your total run game numbers are impacted by the fact that you had a 33-yard intentional grounding uh, penalty on a punt snap, which technically gets credited as a sack, uh, but rushed for more than 250 yards. Um, if you take that out of the equation. Uh, did you accomplish what you set out to do on the ground? You know, I thought we did. I thought, you know, in that area, you know, there was a point in the game to where, like, we just said we are just going to line up running football. And we were able to move the ball and we scored on that drive. Yeah. You know, and so I thought, you know, that part of it, you know, just saying, hey, like, this is what we're going to do regardless of what they do. You know, we're going to do this. We're going to run the football. And to be able to move the ball and get that done, you know, I think that's a step forward for us. Uh, I asked uh, Jaden Sullins this question after the game. I don't know why I didn't pose it to you, but I'll pose it to you now. Uh, was that Jalen Myers' best game running the option? I think it was. He still he missed a couple reads, but you know when the things were there, he made good decisions. You know, and that's the thing with it. You know, you 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 get one guy to position like the seventy yard run that we had. You know, you either <laughs> keep it or pitch it out there. You know, and it gets you in the end zone, and you probably you get four of those, and, you, and you're feeling pretty good about it. <laughs> Carson Newman prevails over the Erskine Flying Fleet. Final score, 14 to 10. We break down the second half when we get back after these messages on the Mike Clowney Show. All right, back of the Mike Clowney Show. Carson Newman victorious at the oh, – let's do that again. Three, two, one. All right, back of the Mike Clowney Show. Carson Newman victorious over the Erskine Flying Fleet, 14-10. to 10. Adam Cavalier alongside the Eagles head coach, Mike Clowney. Mike, a, a second half. Um, again, you touched on it, but can't say enough about the defensive effort. Uh, anytime Erskine had a chance, and they had plenty of chances, especially in the fourth quarter, uh, to either tie or take the lead. Carson Newman defensively uh, made a stop. Major Williams was all over the place. Makai Brown continues to uh, round in the form. Kendall Williams is all over the place. Jameer Augustine uh, got a start in place of a suspended Christian Hicks and turned in his first career double-digit tackle performance. What did you see from that unit uh, a as a whole, especially in the second half, to uh, keep the fleet off the board? You know, I thought defensively, I thought their effort was really good. You know, I thought they, they kept their composure uh, really well. You know, even in those situations, there was never a moment that we sent them on the field that they panicked or they freaked out and, and were just kind of worried about what that situation was. You know, it was once or twice they were going on the field. It was like, hey, don't worry about it. We got you. We got you. And just that mentality and confidence going on to the field, you know, I thought they got to the point to where they play, you know, I call it loose but focused. You know, to where you, they, they had a little chant that they do here at practice a lot. I don't think it was the first time I've really seen it, you know, in a game. And I thought it was something that, you know, really rallied them together, you know, while they're on the field. And that, that, stuff's, that stuff's critical, you know, just knowing that you can depend on the guy beside you and trust him, that that bond is there. And I thought they, they took that into, you know, giving us as a team a chance to win the football game. Major Williams is the first defensive back with two sacks in a game. And... <laughs> Uh, since before digital records exist uh, for Carson Newman. Uh, how has he inserted himself into these 
Uh, these roles doing some su stuff that DBs don't typically do, uh, not just here, but I mean in the game of football. Major is a really smart guy. And that allows you to be able to put him in different places and use him different ways because it doesn't create confusion for him. And I think Coach Slade and defensive staff did a good job, especially this week, of you know finding different little ways to use him. You know, and I thought he did a good job of responding to those. Uh, Kendall Williams, another one of those. Again, you bring up Major with his two sacks. Kendall had one as well. Again, don't know the last time Carson Newman had three sacks by defensive backs. Um, break down Kendall's maturation, because he's, he's starting to trend toward that direction, too, of doing some stuff that uh, is eye-popping. He, he is, and that's where, like, several plays in that game, you know, the sack, naturally. And he has the tackle, you know, down yeah. on the one-yard line, you know, on fourth down. You know, and there was another big play that he made in the middle of the field. You know, a couple of tackles that he makes to where, you know, he's in open field and it's just him. You know, he does a good job playing leverage and then eventually, you know, making tackles to get guys on the ground. Um, he's just continued to grow and develop, you know, as a person and as a player. And those two really have, have a way of intertwining with one another. Jaheim Wilson continues to, uh, I, I'll put it this way, he's one of two guys in the program that's in the 700 squat club, the, the 315 uh, bench, the 300 deadlift club. Uh, that is showing up uh, week in, week out, and him moving people off the ball. What does he enable you to do with his presence physically up front? You know, that's where we always talk about change the line of scrimmage. You know, when you get a big physical guy like that, that can change the line and, and you know, creates problems for everybody. You know, we offensively are talking about knocking down the defense, but, you know, he gives you a chance to knock it down the offense to force some reroutes and some different things like that. My big brag for him is, man, he was sick before the game. He did not feel well at all, but he came in. You couldn't tell that. Never would have video. known. You know, he's fought his way through it and, and played a really good football game. Carson Newman prevails over the Erskine Flying Fleet. The final score, 14-10. to 10. And here are those second-half highlights. Hazel to his left. Pender takes the shotgun stop, no drop, throws middle of the field, it's complete, stopped at the goal line, he is held out, Eagles get the turnover on downs at the one inch line, at a completion on the slant. Myers out of the gun, empty set. Rolls left, throws left for Meeks, complete at the 20. Meeks has running room, spins at the 25 over the numbers left side. Sullins in motion into the backfield as Myers takes option to the right. Myers, late pitch, Sullins has running room. He's across the 40 to the right sideline, and breaks free. Jaden Sullins, nothing but clear South Carolina sky in front of him. He's across the 10, he's across the 5. Sullins takes it the distance. Touchdown, Carson Newman. Speed option right, and Jaden Sullins gallivants. 71 yards to the house. 13-7 to a gain of five officially from the pistol pender. Kai wasn't there. He went to hand off to nobody at Corey Clemson. And Dedrick McClain crashed hard. That's a four-yard loss back to the 43. Bender takes the pistol snap, play fake, rolls right, runs into Kendall Williams, and he is sacked. Kendall Williams was not fooled. He sacks Pender back at the 41-yard line. Pender out of the pistol on second and 14. Drops back to pass, flush up the middle. He's pressured, he's hit, he's down. Makai Brown, Dedrick McClain, the first two there. A loss of five, back to the 48, short side right. Pender back to pass, flush left, pressure from behind by Major Williams, Williams has him, and he sacks him back at the 50. Three straight negative plays generated by the Carson Newman defense. Snap back, hold down, kick is on the way, has plenty of volt, does it have the line, and it does. Career long 48 yard field goal from Dylan Buda from the nine. Pender brings Brown in motion, takes the snap, the give, left side, Hazel, he's hit in the backfield by Major Williams, and stopped, three yards deep, back at the 12, 
Henders takes the pistol sap, has time, pumps, hit, drops from behind. Makai Brown hits him from the rear for a sack back at the 15-yard line. Loss of one, second and 11, clock rolls. 2.40 to play in the fourth. Hender takes, will give in the round left side for Brown. Brown is met by Christian Hicks in the backfield. David Alexander there as well, and they seize him over the left side numbers back at the 13-yard line for a loss of two. All right, those are the second half highlights from the Eagles' 14-10 win over the Erskine Flying Fleet. Talent Talk, head your way when we get back after this on the Mike Clowney Show. Trilight is proud to support Carson Newman Athletics. We salute the student athletes who are working hard to make great things happen on the field, in the classroom, and in the world. It takes vision, commitment, and teamwork, qualities we share at Trilight. Our mission is to provide life-changing opportunities by building a world-class fiber broadband network. If you'd like to learn more, please visit trilight.net or call us at 833-847-0824. All right, back on the Mike Clowney Show. Time for our weekly walk of the field, talent talk, and this week jaunting 100 yards with Andrew Rogers is Ja'Cory Long. Hi again, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Talent Talk. Andrew Rogers here with defensive end Ja'Cory Long. Ja'Cory, let's start our walk here down the field. Um, I hear you play played four sports in high school. Which four? Oh, football. Obviously, I'm here now. <laughs> I played tennis, big agility sport. I also wrestled good with my hips, and then I also did track and field. Okay. So why all those four sports, maybe specifically, why be so versatile and not stick to one sport like football? Well, my passion was always football. Mm. And so when I wasn't playing football, my mom always wanted me active. So I, uh, you know, participated in other sports and I was able to pull from those sports, you know, agility from uh, agility from tennis, mm -hmm. uh, hips, leverage from wrestling, and it helped me become a better football player. Okay, uh, you're studying exercise science here. What uh, drew you into that path? Have you always known you wanted to go into that uh, field of study? Uh, initially, no, but uh, over the first two years here, you know, I was uh, obviously inside a weight room with Jeff, and uh, he told me uh, in order to be a strict and condition coach, a good major or a lead way to that would be exercise science, mm -hmm. and uh, I just wanted kind of replicate what he has going on, being the leader of a football team and a leader of multiple sports. Rolls on the ready for play. Brooks claps with two seconds on the clock. Brooks back to pass, steps up, hit, drop as his helmet comes off. Carson Newman punctuating the second. That is Stanley. the end of the first half. That with is the, the end of the first half. Long side right. Brooks out of the gun, fumbles the snap, bobbles, picks it up, runs straight ahead. Ja'Cory Long is there and he slings him backward for a sack on the opening play back to the 24-yard line. I'll change it up on you here. Uh, what would 12-year-old Ja'Cory think of now, Ja'Cory? Oh, man, that's a good question. 12-year-old Ja'Cory, you no. 12-year-old Ja'Cory is ambitious. So uh, he would see me now as reaching my goals, you know, uh, still setting even more goals and, and uh, uh, trying to accomplish those. So <laughs> I think he'd be proud of the uh, guy he's become now. <laughs> favorite meal of the day. So you, I gotta have a good breakfast. I had to gotta, gotta have a good lunch. Gotta have, gotta have a good dinner. Which one are you picking? I gotta have a good breakfast. Okay. I gotta start off the day with a good breakfast. Yep. Uh, preferably, this is now. This is my usual over at Stokely Memorial. I go with an omelet, two hard fried eggs, and a bagel. Not bad. That's a good All right. Breakfast with your yeah, I like that. Uh, if you could switch lives with one person, who who would you pick? McCall, first, first answer that comes to mind. LeBron James. <laughs> All right. How it feels to be the greatest player, uh, most glorified player, and uh, the most athletic player in the world. Back to you uh, and your time on the playing field here at Carson Newman. Uh, you've been here several years now, uh, another year under your belt last season. What's allowed you uh, to develop and grow your game as a defensive end uh, throughout the years? Mm, uh, I can attribute that to a lot of people. Uh, the first one would be uh, position coach, Coach Jameson. It's always been tough for me, especially with uh, me being a leader. So it's always forced me to be on point so uh, I can, you know, guide the other guys behind me. And uh, Coach uh, Coach Slade as well, he's always put me in position so I can make a lot of plays. What do you enjoy most about playing football? It can be maybe just the guys you play with, where you play. What do you, what do you enjoy most about the game? 
I'm gonna go with camaraderie, the camaraderie of it all. Uh, having brothers, making brothers, year in, year out, and the lifelong relationships. Shakori, enjoyed the walk, thanks for the time. Thank you. That's Shakori Long, defensive end for Carson Newman. I'm Andrew Rogers on another episode of Talent Talk. All right, thank you very much, Andrew Rogers, Mike Clowney, Ja'Cory Long. Again, another one of those guys defensively that continues to develop, continues to show up more and more. Just one of three defensive linemen in the, the last decade with a double-digit tackle performance. He did that uh, two weeks ago against Tusculum. What have you seen from, I don't know whether to call him a senior, junior, or a sophomore, but a guy that uh, has been in the program a minute but has some eligibility left uh, in his development? You know, I'm excited for Jacory. Just the same thing that you use the word development. That's where we talked about that intertwining, you know, growing, you know, as a person and as a player. And you see that same thing with Jacory. I mean, just being able to, you know, have some different conversations with him. He goes from like you fussing at these guys to you really starting to kind of grow with them and have conversation. And and they, they I mean, that's just, for us as coaches, they're our sons. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing that be able to have like some conversations with Jacory that you. Hope to have you with your son when you get older. And then being able to, like, say that translate not just, you know, in the building and in the classroom, but also on the field as well. All right. Turn your attention to a really good Mars Hill team. Tim Clifton's club cl comes in. You'll get a double reverse flea flicker thrown against you, a triple reverse pass. Uh, as always, Tim Clifton, one of the, the more innovative offensive minds uh, in the country. What do you have to do to get ready for uh, – Mars Hill and Community Appreciation Day. You know, I think the big thing we've got to do is, number one, we've got to work on securing the football, um, cleaning up penalties, and then, you know, we got to make sure that we do a good job of, of playing sound, sound football. Um, they hurt us a lot last year, kind of with one particular set, and we've got to make sure that we sure that up. But more than anything, like, we've got to make sure that we are prepared and ready to play from a fundamental standpoint. Be simple, be sound, and play fast. All right, Clowning pleasure as always. Congrats. Uh, on a win over the Erskine Flying Fleet. Thank you. It's Carson Newman head football coach Mike Clowney and the voice of the Eagles, Adam Cavalier. This has been the Mike Clowney Show. Thanks for watching.